How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode episode number 11 moving into the 2023 postseason in the last one we had a bit of a rockier second half than we would have liked but a good enough record of 46 34 and 2 to get us second place in the metropolitan division behind the new jersey devils and ahead of the pittsburgh penguins as well as the philadelphia flyers to also finish in terms of the entire NHL 12th in the entire league. A pretty respectable season, I have to say. And after losing in round one of the playoffs in year number one to the Florida Panthers and missing out on the playoffs in year number two, we are starving for some success here in the year number three first round with the team that we have right now, with the pieces that we acquired last episode as well at the trade deadline, Timo Meyer being one of them, the old captain Nick Felino being another. We have to get things done. I am expecting a deep run in this episode. As I said in the last one, I think anything short of a conference finals would be disappointing. But first off, just want to say a big thank you for all the well wishes now that the channel has a officially been approved for a YouTube partnership and monetization. Pat saying let's run the YouTube algorithm into the boards. Apo saying that he's going to watch all of the ads for us. Uh, Adam saying congrats on the monetization. It's going to be huge with NHL 22 coming out soon. Can't wait for the first NHL 22 franchise. Neither can I. So thank you for all the love, everyone. This will be my longest upload since monetization, as you can see by the length of this video. So here's the deal. If you're new to the channel, what happens in the playoff episodes, what I do is that no matter what, I make the episode about an hour, an hour 10, hour 20, hour 30, hour 40. I always mix it up because if the episode is done after 20 minutes, if we lose in the first round in four games and you know that you see that it's 27 minutes long, there's no reason to get excited. You know it's going to be a disappointment. If we finish after 30 minutes, it could just be an hour of a black screen because I don't want to spoil the episode. However, that hurts the view time analytics and all that with the YouTube algorithms and blah, blah, blah. So I would ask you, if the video does end up being just a black screen for 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, maybe just let it run in the background for a little bit as you do something else. If you so happen to think of that, it would be much appreciated. But nonetheless, I would rather have the episode not be spoiled than make an extra couple dollars because we're all here for the experience. We're here for the role coaster and we're here to have some fun moving into the postseason and speaking of the postseason let's think about how our lines will be looking as you can see if you realized I did make some line changes already according to some suggestions that I received in the comments the one that I'm thinking about most prominently here is from Draxthos he says keep Meyer and let him play with Olafson and then in the following comments says let's go Texier Meyer Olafson for a line so I wasn't sure about putting Texier at center. He has 70 face-offs. His two wingers have 65 and 70. But it does give the line a plus three. Again, does chemistry really matter in the playoffs? We've seen not so much. But nonetheless, they're 85, 84, 85. So let's try this out as a second line. We know line A, Reinhardt, Bjorkstrand is the first line. Let's try this as a second line. We have Jenner, Foodie, Hyman for the third line. Of course, we cannot forget that we went out and acquired Zach Hyman in the last episode. A fan favorite to say the least. Comments were coming in for him. On YouTube, Red Boy saying very happy to see Zach Goat Hyman on the team. Then over in the Discord server, Zach saying that with Hyman here, destiny still arrives. That is probably one of the funniest comments I've seen. <laughs> oh, so, and keeping on Zach, he says, lines, we should maybe try Jenner, Reinhardt, Line A, Meyer, Texier, Bjorkstrand, Hyman, Foodie, Olafsson, and then Sveshnikov, Felino, Sanderson for the fourth line. That completely removes the grinder line. I'm going to give the grinder line a chance to start off the postseason, but I won't be afraid to bring in Nick Felino or just go ahead and call up Evgeny Sveshnikov and or Felipe Sanderson, who we sent back down to get some more conditioning after he scored 12 points in 39 games. He was a negative five playing on our third line. I said, let's actually, now that we have Meyer on the team, let's put Meyer within our top nine and just send Sanderson back down to be able to get some more conditioning. So Jenner to the first line to play with Reinhardt and Line A, going back to Zach's comment, that would give the line a plus five and we can definitely try that but I just don't want that to be our first course of action because we don't want to rely too heavily on chemistry when it may not be helping us at all. To say the Hyman move over me is an understatement. If he's even half as good for you, Big W, uh, Old Man Sports, talking about his series, the Saskatoon Polar Bears, also passing along his theme song, Fair Use, so no worries about the income. And there it is. They play that right after the National Anthem when Zach Hyman's on the ice. Love it, I love it. We'll have to use that more often if uh, Hyman can explode. 
Uh, also, Pat saying, me saying GG at the end of the game, even though I'm angry we lost. That's how exactly how Sidney Crosby will be after round number one. So, speaking of those pesky Penguins, we will be playing Pittsburgh here in round number one. A big rival of the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise. And it's not going to be an easy feat to beat them. Not just because of Jake Gensel, Sidney Crosby, Kasperi Kapanen. But look who's back between the pipes. It is the man himself, Elvis Merzlikens. I'm not saying we can't lose to Elvis, but if I'm telling you right now, if this man posts like three shutouts and a .8 goals against average and a 976 save percentage, I will absolutely snap. This chair is going through a wall. This microphone is being broken in half. I don't know what's going to happen, but I will snap and I will not be in a good place mentally. So Elvis, I really hope that we can break through you. In the playoffs, he uh, played, yeah, he was 3-3-0 and in the playoffs for us in 2021 with one shutout, 924 and a 2.54 goals against average. And meanwhile, we have our only other goalie with playoff experience with us is Jonas Corpisalo, who's now backing up our starter, uh, Igor Shesterkin. When Corpisalo did play in the playoffs in year number one, uh, actually, no, he didn't. No, it's true, because in 2021, it was just uh, um, Elvis. So we don't have any playoff sim numbers for Corpisalo just yet. Igor Shesterkin, when he was on the New York Rangers, he went 2-4-0 and oh, and had good numbers. So hopefully he can hang on to that as our starter now. So you saw the lineup, our defense. We're gonna. I swapped back Jones and Falk to go plus 1, plus 5, as opposed to plus 5 plus one. Hopefully that helps the overalls with Rozenko playing with an 88. Not sure. Larson, Falk, and then Dahan and Wood. But just to go back to the Penguins, the team is a, it's a bit of an odd team in the sense that they don't have much depth, yet their first line all were like in the top scorers of the NHL. Then you have Nosin, Poulain, Ricola, McGinn here in the top nine. Uh, Kreider, the only other player above an 84. Four, okay, you have McCann. So McCann and Kreider, the only two other players above an 80 overall within the top nine. Oh, sorry, within the bottom nine. Defense, McNabb and Latang, Matheson, Marino, Pierre-Olivier, Joseph, and Nicholas Almari. So again, after Latang and Marino, there's no other defenseman above an 80 overall. But with Elvis between those pipes, anything can happen. There were some other good comments here, like from Scott saying, with all the players leaving and having great seasons, a la Zach Wierenski and Max Domi, did we suddenly become Buffalo? That's a very scary thought to have. Uh, some other comments that I won't go over, just talking about maybe we move Boone Jenner and keep Timo Meyer in the offseason for the power forwards, but that's a bridge to cross at the end of this episode and in next episode. Let's start with the playoffs. Game one at Nationwide Arena, Olivia Rodrigo giving the national anthem, belting it out. In the AHL, we still have a couple games left, but things are going swimmingly well for the Cleveland Monsters. A little pun there. And at Nationwide Arena, for game one, round one, year number three, against the Pittsburgh Penguins, it is showtime. First period, 2-0 Jackets. Patrick Laine, after not scoring at all in all seven games in year number one's playoffs against Florida, he had four assists in seven games. He opens up with a power play goal. 22 seconds left, Sam Reinhardt scores another power play goal, and we're up 2-0 after the first period. The big boys coming through. Second period, 4-1. Worf Rizhenko scores twice. His first two playoff goals of his career, I believe, and first two playoff goals as a Columbus Blue Jacket player. Kapanen scores on the power play, but we are up by three. Four to one is the score, out shooting them 17 to four, headed into the final 20 minutes here. Sidney Crosby scores on the power play to bring the Penguins within two. Never underestimate Sid the Kid. Power play for the Jackets now. We played well on the power play, but the Penguins do kill that one off. Power play for the Penguins now, and we kill that one off. Good special teams all around. Under five to go. Patrick Line scores his second of the night, restores the three goal lead, and that'll be all she wrote as we take game number one at home. Five to the final. Two goals from Rozhenko for first star, two goals from Line for second star, and a goal and an assist from Sam Reinhardt for third star. Big night, big statement for game number one. We are back, we are playoff, we are in the playoffs, and we are Stanley Cup contenders. Let's do it. Game number two, keep that momentum rolling at home in front of the fans, and let's try for another two goal first period, perhaps. First period, no scoring. Shots eight to four for Pittsburgh. Second period now, no scoring. Interesting. Shots tied at 18, heading into the final period. No scoring yet. 
who will be the first to break the deadlock here with 20 shots apiece, over 40 shots taken in this game, and no scoring yet. Power play for the Blue Jackets, nothing comes from it. Another power play at the halfway point here, once again killed off, power play for the Penguins now, power play back to the Jackets, still nothing coming, both goalies standing on their heads with under five to go, a minute left, and Chris Kreider scores on the power play. Oh, who's taking penalties? Hyman with the slash, no, but it was Falk with the holding, right? Was it fall? No, it was the slash. Hyman, what are you doing? Zach Hyman takes two minutes for slashing. We cannot capitalize on any of our power. Pl we had how many power plays did we have in this game? We had one, two, three. We, had, we went 0 for four on the power play. Ah, uh, add the empty netter and the Penguins take it two nothing the final. Ah, uh, again, of course. There's the first of three shutouts for Merzlikens in this episode. Shesterkin, 23 saves, but not enough as Kreider converts on the power play. Very disappointing. The penalty killers did what they could, but Zach Hyman, man, you let me down there. Come on, we got you to be a, a, a not just a performer, but a monster out here. Cleveland, we ended 53-18-5. and five. We're taking on Utica here in the first round. Hopefully all goes well for them. They had a very good season. We'll touch upon their points at the end of this episode. Now moving into Pittsburgh at PPG Paints Arena, game number three. It's a best of five. This is after game three is usually around the point where you say, are there changes that we should be making to this lineup? But for now, let's see game number three on the road. First period, 1-0 Pittsburgh, Jake Gensel. Second period now, we tie it back up. There's Zach Hyman, thank you very much. Redeems himself a little bit, but it's not a full redemption until we get this dub. Shots 18 to 15 in our favor, 1-1 game into the third. Thank you, Mr. Hyman, on that third line. Five minutes into the period, we are leading in shots, and we continue to extend our lead, but the Penguins are keeping with us. But Andrew Shaw on that fourth line, what a season he had. Power play to <laughs> just extend it, Victor Olofsson. That's exactly what I wanted and exactly what he gave me. Under five to go, up by two. Will that be enough? And yes, it will be. Andrew Shaw gets the game-winning goal. The man has ice in his veins. What a season he had as our fourth-line center. Came over as a throw-in in in the Max Domi-Sam Steele deal, and he ends up being the last man standing, forward-wise. Adam Larson's still here. Olofsson adds the power play goal as some insurance. Outshoot the Penguins 32-20. Gensel still gets first star, but whatever. Goal and assist from Hyman. Game winner from Andrew Shaw, and we take it 3-1 the final to go up two to one in this series. Okay, so the fourth line is working. I don't think we have to touch anything. Uh, not enough goals have been scored really to, to really see extreme plus minuses, I don't think, but plus three, plus three, one, one, negative one, negative one for Dahan and Wood. But through three games, negative one, that's not the end of the world. Shesterkin, 941 save percentage and a 1.34 goals against average. And we'll just keep rolling like that. Not much going on for... Actually, yeah, Jenner has three assists. It's more the second one. That's nah, still doing well enough. Everyone's playing okay. Let's keep on doing what we're doing into game number four. On the road once again. We won the last game on the road. We can win this one on the road. And let's go back home with a chance to end it. First period starts off 2-0 for the Penguins. Dano and McCann then on the power play. We got outshot 13-9. Second period, 2-1. Victor Olofsson cuts the lead to one. Very important goal that has us only down by one into the third period. Outshot by two. Lots of hockey left to be played. This game is not over yet. Big goal from Victor Olofsson, and that's what we needed into the third period. We just need one, and it is Zach Hyman who gets that one. 2-2 is the score now, halfway through this period, and Alex Texier puts us ahead, the second line center, he was a simulation king in year number one, he is finding his form once again here in the playoffs of year number three, we're up by one with two minutes left to go, can we hang on tight with the final seconds, and yes, we do, what a third period, Zach Hyman, four minutes and four seconds in, Texier just four and a half minutes after that, and we go from down 2-1 to winning it 3-2 the final. Sid with two assists. Dana with a goal, but whatever. Alex Texay with that big goal. Who oh, gets him second star. Timo Meyer four assists in four games. All very tight scores through these games. But we take it 3-2 the final. Headed into game number five. Back at home at Nationwide Arena. I don't think there's anything to say except let's finish this off, boys. Let's finish this off. Take down the Penguins in five. Don't, let, don't even give them a... 
an inkling of possibility that they can get back in this series. First period, 3-1 Jackets, bang! Justin Falk, short-handed no less. Latang comes back on the power play a minute and 20-ish, a minute 14 seconds later. Timo Meyer restores our lead, and then two minutes after that, Patrick Laine says, let's make it 3-1 heading into the second. Shots are 16-7, to 3-1 game. Second period, 4-2 with one goal apiece. Liam Foody scores his first career playoff goal, and Samuel Poulain likely scoring his first career playoff goal as well. Shots 23-15 to 15 now, headed into the final period. The Penguins have 20 minutes to get themselves back in this series. We just have to hold on tight, maybe add to it, and close it out, and we'll see you in round two. Early power play for the Blue Jackets, but McGinn scores just as it expires. Our lead is now cut to one with 14 minutes to go. Out shooting the Penguins by about eight, but it is just that one goal holding the difference. Under 10 to go, but Sam Reinhardt gives us back the two-goal lead, but McCann says, hold up, hold up, we're not done yet. Back to a one-goal lead. Five minutes left to go, and Chris Kreider ties it up with 447. Power play for the Penguins. We kill it off, and we're headed to overtime. Wow, we're outscored 3-1 to one in the period. Thank goodness Reinhardt scored that one. Shots 28-24 in our favor, but it is a 5-5 game, a high-scoring affair. We're headed into overtime at home. At home at Nationwide Arena, overtime of game number five. Goal for the Penguins will bring our lead in this series down three games to two, but a goal for us will send us through to round number two for the first time in a long time. Here's Jake Gensel over the blue line. Nice little move. Gets it to Kapanen. Can't get it through Rojenko, though, and he gets it up to Line. A. Looking for an exit out of the zone. Skates back. Finds Oliver Bjork's friend now, who's leading the charge. Gets squeezed, but gives it to Line, who finds a little bit of space. Line pushed off by McNabb. He gets it up to Sidney Crosby now. First line's dueling each other. He gets destroyed into the boards by Seth Jones. What's happening there? He somehow regains the puck. Crosby gets destroyed again. Huge hit again by Seth Jones. Now here comes Timo Meyer, Getting past Latang with a little bit of shoulder strength. Gets stood up, though. Chris Latang over the blue line, two on two, over to Rourke. Chartier, one timer's broken up. Matheson, Nosen, and now Kreider circling around the bottom of the zone. Getting it out though is Olafson up to Timo Meyer. Gets it through the skates, has a lane, but a huge save from Elvis Merzlikens. Five and a half minutes into this overtime. Whew, and take a breath. Offensive zone face off here for the third lines going up against each other now. It is going to be Liam Foody who wins it back to Adam Larson. Larson, put it on net, big boy. Here's Foody scores! Liam Foody, the rookie, puts the Blue Jackets through to the second round. 6-5 the final. And what is going on? That was a black, screen, weird screen, but that's okay. What a win. Getting Merzlikens to go on the poke check and then puts it on the blocker side. Liam Foody with a great rebound and the Penguins are done in five games. We are through. Crosby and Jenner shaking hands. There's the handshake line. Emotional for everyone. Shesterkin shaking hands with Elvis, who couldn't do it against his old team. And we win it at home. Big save there on Timo Meyer, but they left him out to dry. Larson putting it on net, and Foodie getting that rebound. Let me see this again. Right there. No defense coverage, unfortunately, in front of that crease. And the Jackets take it 6-5. to five. Shots ended up being 30 to 24 in the end. And the rookie, Liam Foody. It was earlier in this game, I believe, that he scored his first goal, correct? So that was a first, not only his first career playoff goal, but his first career multi-goal playoff game. So for the first time since 2019, and only the second time in the franchise's 20-year history, the Columbus Blue Jackets are through to the second round of the playoffs. Who will we be facing? I have a few days of rest, which is very nice. There's a lot of tight one goal games. So everybody get your rest, eat your vitamins, and let's see what happens in round number two. AHL, we make it through to the second round, which is nice. And I'll check the points right after we see who our opponent will be. And in round number two, we will be facing the Montreal Canadiens. Wow, Le Canadien Montreal. This is gonna be a fun one. Let's take a second to look at those points. Like I said, Timo Meyer was point per game with five in five. Other player, yeah, Boone Jenner also five for five with five assists. Patrick Laine, three goals and four points in five games. Reinhardt, Foodie, Falk, Bjorkstrand, all with four points. Nice to see the scoring being there. Uh, Olafson, Hyman, Rozenko, Texier, Jones, all with three in five. Larson with two, Shaw with that one, same with Delorier, nothing from Dehan, Clutterbuck, or Kyle Wood. 
Goaltending, Shesterkin had a 908 save percentage and a 2.17 goals against average. And all is well in the world through that first round. Very nice. But now we're going to be taking on the Canadian Montreal and we'll see what they did in the playoff tree here. I'm curious to see what happened again between the Flyers and the Bruins. The Bruins won that in five games. So the Canadians beat the Devils. Wow, the Metropolitan Champion, New Jersey Devils, with Zach Wierenski lose in seven to the Montreal Canadiens. And now it's going to be Bruins and Leafs in the second round. That's a classic matchup right there. Winners will go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. In the West, it's Hawks and Jets, Canucks and Preds. Let's check out the lineup for the Montreal Canadiens now. They have some good francophone boys in there to keep the media happy. We got Tatar, Kutkin, Yemi up to an 89 overall and 90 overall Cole Caulfield. Sheesh! Second line, Toffoli, Suzuki, and Zucker. Jonathan Drouet on that third line with Rupe Hintz and Brendan Gallagher. Oh my goodness. And then Josh Anderson, Matthias Janmark, and Artem Semyonov, the second overall pick uh, with five-star shooting, 83 overall in the fourth line. This is a very good offensive team. What's up on defense? Romanov, Romanov, and Petrie. Weber at an 83 overall with Edmondson, and then Legson, Legson with Mark Borowicki on that third pair at 79 overall. Goaltending, is it Carey Price? Yeah, well, actually, it's him and Allen, both at 83 overall. Interesting. So, scratches, Lekkonen, Evans, and McGinn. Wow. Wow. This is a very good hockey team. Four points in seven games for Tatar, six and seven for Kakanyemi, only two for Caulfield. But that second line seems to be doing a bit better, perhaps. I don't know, but they have the overall, that's for sure. A very scary team on paper. I wish this was the real-life Montreal Canadiens in 2023. That would be nice with those overalls. But, wow. So, we'll have to combat that with the lineup that we've had. I'm not going to touch it just yet. I am tempted to bring out Cal Clutterbuck and put in Nick Felino, but it seems to be doing okay. They're all at an even or plus for the plus minuses. Only thing I'm kind of concerned with is maybe the third pair of defense, negative two, negative one with Dahan and Wood. I'm not going to take out Dahan because he's good for the power play, but Wood coming out for Gavrikov is a possibility. But we'll know more once we get into this series. We're going to start off with game number one in round number two at Nationwide Arena, hosting Le Canadien Montréal for uh, uh, what is set to be a fantastic series, I think. This could be a barn burner night in, night out. First period, no scoring. Okay, shots 15 to 7. Second period, 3 to 2. There's five goals in one period. Andrew Shaw, by the way, playing as his old team, a team that he played on. Suzuki opens up the scoring. Shaw ties this game up. Hints and Anderson extend the lead to two with two goals in 39 seconds. But then Bjorkstrand on the power play cuts the lead to one. Third period now, shots are virtually even, and we just need one to tie it all up. Last time I said that, Zach Hyman came through. So maybe that would be fun if he could do that again. But I would take one goal from anyone here. If anyone can beat 83 overall, Jake Allen. But no, it's a power play goal for Rupe Hints. And now we're down by two, despite shots being tied at 34, tied at 36 now. Power play again for the Canadians. We kill that one off, but too little too late here. For, yeah, there it is. Too little too late for Timo Meyer as he scores on Carey Price with 19 seconds left. Not sure why Allen's out of there. 39 shots apiece. So it was an offensive game like I thought it would be, but the goaltending stood tall, especially Jake Allen with his 32 saves. Uh, Shesterkin played well. Just that, you know, that one extra goal is all it takes to get a dub. And we drop game number one at home to the Canadians. I'm not going to touch anything yet moving into game number two. Uh, if we drop both at home, I think that might mean some drastic changes heading into game number three at the Bell Center. But let's see what we can do here after a tight one goal loss in game one. Second, uh, first period, excuse me, it is Justin Falk scoring his first even strength goal, and we're up one to nothing. Second period, one to one, as Jeff Petrie ties it up on the power play. Justin Falk, I need him to be shades of what he had in year number one with us. Shots are 27 to 18 for Montreal. We need to batten down the hatches defensively and get more shots on net. Third period, tie game. 20 minutes to decide if it's going to be a 2 nothing Canadians lead or if we're tying this series up. Power play for us is killed off by the Canadians. Shots 30-21 to 21 halfway through the period now. Still looking for one goal. Both teams desperate for it with under five to go now. Who will be the late hero, if any, with under a minute to go? And we're headed to overtime. Shots 36-25 to 25 for the Canadians. Shesterkin playing so strong, and we're headed to overtime. 
Overtime here in game number two at Nationwide Arena. A goal for the Canadians puts them up 2 to nothing in this series, heading back home. But a goal for us will tie this series up, make it a best of five. Bjorkstrand in the corner, can't get it in front as Tatar breaks it up. Bjorkstrand delivers a big hit, trying to regain possession, and he does. Coming in to help with Sam Reinhardt. Now he's pinned in the corner. Line A looking for options here in the corner. He loses possession to Kokanyemi. Gets it up to Tatar now. Thomas Tatar over the blue line. Gets past Rizhenko. Line A breaks it up. Great defensive. Rare defensive play as well from Line A. Petrie, Tatar cycling in the zone now. To Caulfield. Can't quite get it on net. Line A regains it in front. Scores! And the Blue Jackets tie this series up. Taking a quick little breath there, and then lots of action happening in a very short amount of time as the board pin works out, the puck gets fished out, put into the slot, no one's there, and it's an easy tuck for Patrick Line. There it is. Let's, sorry, for Alex Texier, what am I saying? It was Line who set it up, and Alex Texier finishes off the playmaker. What a finish here to tie this series up at one. A huge, huge play. Line was working hard in those corners through that whole short overtime period. And he ends up getting the game-winning assist. Puts it on the platter for Alex Texier. We got outshot 36 to 26 in this one. But Alex Texier, second star of the night with his game-winning goal. The first star has to be Igor Shosturkin. Shout out as well to Bjorkstrand working in the corner. But Bjork, uh, Shosturkin making 35 saves on 36 shots. There he is. That's why we went out and got him in free agency. And this series is now tied up at one. And it's a best of five headed back to Montreal. So all the series are tied 1-1 right now, aside from the Bruins who are up 2-0 on the Leafs. LOL. And now we're headed into game number three at the Bell Center against the Canadians. Uh, the scoring, man, I, I would like to change up the lines and generate some more offense, but I'm not sh quite sure what that would be. The plus, the top six is doing quite well. The third line's also performing with these numbers here. So Delorier and the fourth lines, the fourth lines out here, the fourth lines out here. I will try something a bit risky. I'm going to take out Clutterbuck and put in Felino. I just want to see if that does anything because they're only playing a short amount of time per night. Takes away the plus three down to a zero, but Felino is an 81 overall and has an higher, a higher offensive upside than Clutterbuck. Defensively with the pluses, the struggles continue a little bit aside from the top pair. And Shosturkin still killing it, 917 save percentage. Nothing else to touch, I don't believe. We're headed into game number three in Montreal at La Centre Belle. Let's do it. They're chanting Bleu Blanc Rouge. First period, 2-1 Canadians. Rajenko opens up the scoring, but then Cole Caulfield scores two goals in 10 minutes. First one coming on the power play to give the Montreal Canadiens a 2-1 lead. Second period now, 3-1 as Rupe Hintz extends it to 2. We're being outshot 24-23, to and we're down by 2 here in the third period. We need some scoring and fast. And thank you, Victor Olfsson, for answering that call. We're now within 1 with lots of hockey left to be played. Power play for the Blue Jackets is killed off. We have 33 shots on net, but only have beaten Allen twice. We kill off the Canadians' power play, get a power play of our own, and then the Canadians kill that one off as well. Under five to go. Out shooting the Canadians, 38-31. Late power play, pull the goalie, and nothing comes but Patrick Line. He scores nonetheless on the empty net. Oh, we pull the goalie for a six on four. Cannot capitalize on the power play, but after it is over, it's still a six on five with that empty net. And Patrick Line with 41 seconds left is the hero to tie this up at three and send it into overtime. Shots are 39 to 32, and we're headed back for some extra hockey once more. At home in Montreal, La Centre Belle, a goal for either team puts them up 2-1 to one in this series. Late rally in the third period by the Blue Jackets. They have momentum. Reinhardt, oh, just wide there. Uh, so the momentum in the favor of the Blue Jackets, but anything can happen here, especially in Montreal. Petrie fishes it out and he's going to try to start a charge the other way. He's taking it all the way by himself, actually, up against Rozhenko. He gets into the corner, uh, whips it around to Romanov. Tatar now in front. Kokanyemi. Oh my goodness, a weird one timer, Shosturkin. That was a weird tap as Shosturkin was sliding the opposite direction but puts out the pad. Still with his Cleveland Monsters helmet, even though he never played in Cleveland. So that's cool. Thank you, EA, for that. To Foley now into Columbus's zone to Tatar. Come on, Cal. What is that? Huge wide open one timer. Easy goal for the Canadians. Not sure who that was. A little bit of a defensive breakdown there. Oh, and of course they're going to score on a massive wind-up one-timer like that when Shosturkin has to move across the crease so much. 
So Worf commits there, forces Jones into the hit, and then no one's covering whoever is a cucking Yemi. Yeah, no one's covering him for that massive slap shot 1T past the, the glove that couldn't come up fast enough of Igor Shosturkin. So there's Yupi, love to see him. Just like that, we are down 2-1 to in this series, despite outshooting Montreal 39-34. to Ugh. We take the L and are down now down 2-1 to one in the series. So another one-goal game, this time going to the Montreal Canadiens. We're down 2-1 in the series. Bruins are up 3-0 on the Leafs. It is time for game number four after back-to-back -back overtimes. Let's try and just run through this game and get a clean dub here, my friends. How is Nick Foligno in that last showing here on the fourth line? Plus one in four minutes and ten seconds of ice time. Ah, uh, line A with four and two, Reinhardt two and three, Bjorkstrand not scoring enough for my liking. I could swap him up with Victor Olofsson, actually, who's been playing well, three and three. Let's try that A little swap there of Olofsson and Bjorkstrand. We'll keep the third line as is, I guess. They haven't done much in this second round, unfortunately, and I'm not going to move anyone from the fourth line. Uh, mm, I could swap Meyer and Hyman. Yeah, I could swap Meyer and Hyman. But Meyer's been playing well with six points in eight games, so I won't touch that. Just the Olofsson Bjorkstrand switch. And it hasn't been terrible defensively, but you know, Gavrikov is close to coming in here. Here we are in Montreal for game number four, down 2 1 in the series. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Warf Rajenko scores 29 seconds into the period, and we're up 1 to nothing. And then a power play goal from Boone Jenner. Before we're even five minutes into this game, we're up 2 nothing. First period comes to a close with those two goals being the only ones. Shots 14 to 7, doubling the shots, and it's 2 0 for Columbus. Second period, 2 to 1. Thomas Tatar scoring the lone goal for the Canadians late with a minute 45 left in the period. Outshooting Montreal 23 to 14, up by one, headed into the third period, looking to hang on tight and add to this lead so that we can tie this series up at two. Five minutes into this period, nothing coming yet. We're close to doubling the shots at 28 to 16. Power play for the Blue Jackets. An extended power play opportunity for us, but Montreal kills it all off. Goes on power play of their own. An extended power play of their own. Five on three. We kill all of it off, and we hang on for a 2-1 win. What in the world? Look at this. So it's a major for elbowing, and then a minor for slashing. So just pretty much from the 710 mark to the 239 mark almost five minutes of being shorthanded sheesh but it ends up being the goal of a boon jenner on the power play four minutes and 42 eight excuse me four minutes and 38 seconds into the game that ends up being the game winner we outshot them 34 to 19 allen made 32 saves but jenner gets the game winner two assists from sam reinhardt and this series is tied at one with another game that is decided by one goal. Wow. We're back at home, May the 1st, 2023. The Bruins swept the Maple Leafs, so they're off to the Eastern Conference Finals to take on either us or the Canadians. In the West, things are a bit tighter. Let's do it at Nationwide Arena at home to give ourselves a lead in this series. First period, 1-1. Boone Jenner, the captain, coming through again. Shea Weber, though, the captain of the Canadians with four seconds left, keeps his team alive. Second period, 2-2 game. Timo Meyer, and again, giving up a goal in the final minute, even the final 30 seconds, as Kotkaniemi scores that with 23 seconds to go. Shots tied at 19. Score tied at 2. Final 20 minutes to have that have huge implications moving into this next game as well. But let's see who can get this one. Power play opportunity. Long extended power play. Extremely long. And the captain, Boone Jenner, scores his second of the night and three goals in two games. We're up by one. That seems to be the decider this in many games this series. And it once again will be as Kyle Wood adds the empty netter. Shots were 28-26, but we take it 4-2 the final. Thanks to the captain, Boone Jenner, coming through. Two goals for him. 24 saves from Shesterkin and Timo Meyer scoring one of his own to get third star. Oh my goodness. Just like that, we are now up 3-2 in this series, headed into game six in Montreal. Let's just keep things going as they are. Nothing to touch. I just want to see Boone Jenner, man. The captain, Boone Jenner. Eight, excuse me, three goals, five assists, four eight points, plus two in 10 games, playing third line minutes. You love to see it. You just absolutely love to see it. Oh, to close it out in Montreal and go to the conference finals for the first time in this franchise's history, over 20 years now, let's close it out 
and go see the Boston Bruins in the conference finals. Game six, round two, let's hit it. First period, 1-1. Timo Meyer opening it up and Josh Anderson scoring for the Canadians, keeping it tied at one. Second period, once again, 2-2. Two two. Liam Foody scores in the power play. Haven't seen him score since he won it in round number one, us the series in round number one. Then Josh Anderson scores his second of the night. Shots are 21-14 to 14 in our favor, but once again, for the second straight game, we head into the third period with the score tied at two. Final 20 minutes here. Who could be our hero to send us through? Or will the Canadians have some hope that pushes it to seven? Justin Falk gives us the one goal lead. And Calvin DeHaan comes out of nowhere for his first goal of the playoffs. We're now up by two. Four goals on 18 shots. Under 10 to go. The Canadians have two goals on 30. They're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at Igor Shosturkin. But Kyle Wood gives us the guarantee. Three goals from defensemen in the third period. Two goals on 33 shots against us. We score five on 27. And for the first time in the Columbus Blue Jackets history, we are through to the conference finals. What a night. Two goals for Anderson, but 31 saves from Shesterkin. Justin Falk, the game-winning goal and an assist to boot. 5-2 the final. Oh my goodness. Take a breath. Oof, took a little bit of a walk. Oh, goodness. I hope you're enjoying this one. Grab a snack. Put your feet up if you haven't already. It's time for the Eastern Conference Finals. We already know that we'll be against the Boston Bruins. We don't know who's going to be playing in the West. In the AHL, by the way, we are through to the Conference Finals as well, taking on the Bridge Sound, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Sound Tigers, who are 51, 20, and 5. That'll be a good matchup. In the West, it's going to be, let's see, after the Canucks went to 7, it'll be the Jets and the Canucks, an all-Canadian matchup in the Western Conference Finals. So the Bruins went 52-26-4 and four on the season. I believe that was good enough for the President's Trophy, if I my memory serves me right. And no, it was Vegas. Yeah, so they were best in the Eastern Conference, but not better than Vegas. Nonetheless, a fantastic season for them. In the playoff tree here, round number one, they took down the Flyers in five. They swept the Leafs, so they are 8-1 and one on the postseason right now. The Canucks took down the Preds in seven. The Jets taking down the Hawks in six. Through 11 games, Patrick Laine's point per game with 11 in 11. Victor Olofsson with nine. Timo Meyer with eight. Same for Jenner and Reinhardt. So nice to see that the players that we acquired, being Olofsson, Meyer, Falk, in some more recent than others, are up here in the point category. But Jenner especially with eight and 11. Reinhardt, eight. Bjorkstrand and Falk with seven. Foodie, Texier, Jones, all with six. Rajenko, Hyman, both with 5 in 11. Kyle Wood, 4. Shaw, Larson, 3. Dahan, Delorier, 2. Felino, no points and a plus 1 through 4 games. Clutterbuck, no points, plus 1 through 7 games. Shesterkin, through 2 rounds and 8 wins, has a 918 save percentage and 2.24 goals against average. So 11 games played for him, and he's been doing exceptionally well. Moving to the Boston Bruins now and looking at their lineup. On their first line, Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, and David Pasternak. So aging stars, but stars nonetheless. Especially Eric Stahl at the age of 38 as well. Taylor Hall is here at the age of 31, 87 overall with Craig Smith to round out that second line. Coyle, Dickinson, DeBrusque on the third. Brandon Lemieux, David Krejci, 37 years of age, and Jack Studnika on the fourth line. Defense, Ben Sherratt, Charlie McAvoy, Tyson Barry, Urho Vakanainen, Matt Grizzlick, Brendan Carlo. A very well-rounded team, I have to say. And between the pipes, it is Jeremy Swayman, 84 overall, backed up or sharing starts with 84 overall anti-Ranta. Moore, Hiroshi, Forsling, all good scratches for the team. So similar to Montreal, a very well-rounded team, a pretty scary team in some regards. But I think we have the horsepower to get it done. Marshawn with 8 in 9. Bergeron with 5. Pasternak only one goal in 9 games. So there's Taylor Hall. 10 points in 9 games. Stahl with 9 points in 9 games. 85 poise getting it done. And Craig Smith, 5 goals, 9 points in 9 games. So that's second line. Even the third line. Man. What about defensively? Charlie Coyle and uh, McAvoy. Charlie Coyle. Charlie McAvoy with 8 points in 9 games. Uh, Barry 2. Okay, and Swayman's numbers, he has a 956 save percentage with a 1.3 goals against average. Okay, okay, let's, you know, hold our horses there. Sheesh, so we're no longer the team with home ice advantage. We're playing at TD Garden for game number one of this franchise's first ever conference final game. Now in the Eastern Conference, as they never made the Western Conference when they were back in the West, but let's do it nonetheless. TD Garden, Game 1, Round 3, 
Hang on tight. First period, 1-1 game. Timo Meyer opens it up in the power play. Stugnika gets a power play goal of his own three minutes later. This game's tied at one. Shots tied at 12. Second period, 3-1 Bruins as they begin to pull away now. DeBrusque and Bergeron score two goals within the three or so minutes of each other. And we're heading into the third. We're still kind of there in the shots, but down by two. We need a goal fast to get back into this thing and not let it swip, slip away before it is too late. Five minutes in, nothing coming yet. Shots 32 to 26. Halfway through the period, still down by two. No goals for either team. The shots have been coming. 35 to 31, now 37, 33. A lot of them are coming. But both goalies, my goodness, wow. Shots 39 to 34, and we only have a 3-1 game. Four goals after like 40, uh, sorry, like 80 shots. Swayman, first star of the night with 33 saves. Bergeron, DeBrus scoring those goals in the first period, and that's all it took. 3-1 the final for the Bruins as they win game number one. Game number two now. Ah, I feel like I gotta make changes more quickly. I can't wait till game three against the Bruins here. Negative three for Dahan. You're killing me, buddy. You're absolutely killing me. So if I take out Dahan and put Gavrikov, that's fine for the third D pair. It still gets a plus. No, it's a zero. But the power play moves down from a plus three to a plus one. I could still put someone else out there, like, actually not mine, it'd probably be Seth Jones. Could put Seth Jones on the power play, keeps a plus one, right? Could do that, could do that. Uh, I'm gonna try it for one game. Before things get too late and I, regret, I start regretting it, uh, I'll put Falk here, and there we go. Let's try that out and see what happens. Plus one on the four-man power play. Game number two at TD Garden. Down one nothing in the series. As usual, let's tie it up and make it a best of five. Let's punch it. First period, no scoring. Second period, no scoring. Shots tied at 18. So really, it's Swayman and Shosturkin in this series. They've allowed four goals through... Be bet between the two of them, allowing four goals through five periods of play. Pretty impressive stuff. Third period now, and the first icebreaker of this one goes to Charlie McAvoy, scoring a minute and a half into the third. Still not insurmountable. Let's get back in this one ASAP. Power play for the Blue Jackets, and it gets killed off by the Bruins. Still one nothing for Boston with under five to go. Shots are even, but Jeremy Swayman. One nothing loss. That's brutal. Shots 32-31. That's brutal. No excuse. We gotta score. We have to score. We scored one goal in two games against this guy. 84 overall. How does he simulate so well? No excuse. Uh, I'm not gonna put the lines in a blender, but let me try mixing things up. Alright, so remembering that we're probably disregarding chemistry for the most part, let's try this as the lineup. Olofsson, Foodie, Meyer, second line. Bjorkstrand back to the first line. Texay, Jenner, Hyman, third line. Let's get Falk up with Rajenko on the first D pair for the plus five. Even if it's not for the plus five, just like I said, to mix things up overall wise. Get Jones playing with Larson. Gavrikov in that one game, of course, he was the negative one. Just absolutely killing me out here, this third defensive pair. And let's do it. We're down 2-1 in the series. We're headed back to home ice now. Sanderson injured hand for Cleveland. That's unfortunate, so... Will okay. Let me make a quick change here. All right, that's all done. Uh, the scouts are almost done. I'll pro I'll pause after game the next couple games or so to get that done. But we're down to nothing in this series. Jets are up to nothing over the Canucks, and we are back at home. Home ice advantage. We just lost a couple games in brutal fashion. We're not scoring enough. Let's get the the home fans behind us and put on a show for them. First period. There it is. All right, there it is. Marchand scores early, but Liam Foodie gives us some hope there. Shots only 7-6, 1-1 game after the first. Second period, 2-2 two, two goal apiece again. Jer Justin Falk, with his second shorthanded goal, the playoffs, puts us ahead, but then Taylor Hall on the power play ties it back up. Shots now 22-14 for the Bruins as they are pulling away in that regard, but it is 2-2 two, two here in the third period. We need some he hometown heroics. I'm looking at you, Boone Jenner, I was about to say, but Kyle Wood comes through. Bergeron scores on the power play to tie it right back up. Wood, I kept you out there on that third defensive pair. He rewards me by scoring a goal, but unfortunately Bergeron comes right back and scores again. Nonetheless, it is 3-3 with under three minutes to go now. Late heroics and regulation, none. Shots are 34-24 for Boston. 
and we're headed into overtime. This is a huge overtime for us at home. Bergeron versus Reinhardt at the face-off circle. A goal for us puts us back in the series and cuts the Bruins' lead two games to one, but a goal for Boston will put them up three to nothing and force us to have to pull off the reverse sweep. Let's get this done here. Bergeron into our zone. Yeah, just let him walk in. That's great. Shesterkin makes a big save up there. Bjorkstrand, line A, big save from Swayman. Lucky chance there on the blue line. It's been a hit parade here, by the way. Just big open ice neutral zone hits going back and forth. Not much action so far. Bergeron now in the corner. And Larson breaks it up, though. He's going to try to get it out. Please don't skate backwards with two guys on you. Thank you, Foodie. Up to Meyer now. Here's an opportunity for Timo. Puts it behind the net to Liam Foodie. In front, big save from the blocker of Swayman on that opportunity from Victor Olofsson. Here's Craig Smith now. Gets through Larson, but a big glove save from Shesterkin. And gets it up to Victor Olofsson. Olofsson, that free agent acquisition. He wants to make the Stanley Cup Finals. Show it to me, big boy. Jones from the point, glove save Swayman. Dickinson into the zone, gets it to the brusque, but a good break up there by Jones. Gets it to Dickinson, big sliding save from Shesterkin as he comes across the crease and gets the shoulder on it. Texay destroyed behind the net. McAvoy at the point to Sherratt. Gets it down low to Dickinson. Back to the top of the circle is DeBrusque to Dickinson. Can't get it through. Coyle can't quite get a rebound on it either. Dickinson once again. Coyle in front. DeBrusque. Dickinson, what is going on with the breakdown? Another huge pad save from Shesterkin as no one is helping him out. Just creating traffic. Hyman finally brings it out of the zone. Over to Alex Texier now. Here's a chance for Sam Reinhardt. One-timer. The stick of who was at Sherratt breaks up that one-timer. Krejci now. Two-on-one. Nice saucer to Lemieux. Big save again from Igor. Coyle gets hit hard. Lemieux can't. He's on the floor. Two Bruins are down. Let's go. Take advantage. Line A. Skating. Reinhardt saved by Swayman. Reinhardt. Look for that lane. Here we go. Line A has open ice with Bjorkstrand. Line A in front. Big save. Swayman on the one-timer. Andrew Shaw now to Nick Delorier. Big Nick. The fourth line grinders are here. Delorier! Oh, Shaw! Had it on the doorstep. Oh, could have been the hero again. Here's Craig Smith. Huge hit from Gavrikov. Gavrikov leading the charge. Rip it, Gavrikov! <laughs> Bad save. Don't see him going in for the shot too often. Brennan Lemieux now pinned by Felino. Gavrikov, why is he pinching so low? Grizzlick, Smith, Carlo. He Gavrikov gets back and delivers a huge hit though. But with an opportunity, Eric Stahl scores. Oh. Eric Stahl, how does he do it? Turning back the clock in the year 2023. And the Bruins are up three to nothing in this series. Where are you, Kyle Wood? Your back is turned to the play. Why? Look at this right here. His back is turned to the play. Why? Why, Kyle Wood? Shots 43 to 31. Shesterkin left, hung out to dry again. And it's a one goal loss. Tough, tough times. The Jets also up 3 0 in their series. They're on the edge of sweeping the Canucks, and we're on the edge of being swept. I want to make the Eastern Conference Finals, and we made it. But now we're putting the lines in a blender for sure. We're going to go best lines. That's always the strategy whenever we're down 3 0. Best lines it. Let the computer decide who's scratched. Felino and Wood end up being the scratches, and here's how the lineup looks. Uh, Rajenko Jones. Dahan fall with a negative two, but that's what the computer says, so that's what, the com what we will do. Uh, man, let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best. If things start to get serious, we can look at in-depth line changes, but we got to win four in a row here. It's not impossible, but it won't be easy against the Boston Bruins. At home at the very least, though. Here we are. Game four at home. Our last chance to make something happen. Don't Well, we don't want to let it be our last chance. We want to start this to be the start of something special. So game one of four. That The next four Ws. Let's go. First period. Oh, boy. Coyle, Bergeron, and Hall. Three goals on 16 shots. Nice. Second period, 5-0. Yeah, so note to self, never let the computer do anything ever again. And we're down 5 nothing here in the third period. That is going to be it. We're going to call it a year there, my friends. It was not a bad year at all. We have pieces to build on. We made big moves to contend for the Stanley Cup. We were one of the final four teams in the NHL. We made the Eastern Conference Finals. Reinhardt scores one for us. And you know what? It's nothing to be ashamed of. It is disappointing, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. 
We'll have to make changes moving to next season a little bit. Reinhardt scores two in the end. Who are we going to be keeping? Who resigns? Who goes? We'll have to figure that out. Reinhardt, hey, he gets, we lose six to two and he gets first star of the night. Nice little patron, patronization. Tough, 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 tough. But we play 15 games. We have set, uh, some small victories here. Patrick Laine with 13 points. Reinhardt, 12. Meyer, Olafson, Jenner, all with 10. No one really ran away with the goal scoring as no one scored more than 5. Falk, 8. Bjorkstrand, 8. Foodie, Texier, 7. Would have expected a little bit more from guys like Zach Hyman and Alex Texier. Even from Bjorkstrand, only one goal from him in 8 games. Negative 2 from Hyman. Dahan, negative 5. So I bet that Dahan and Falk pairing was terrible in that last game. I should have checked in depth. Shesterkin's numbers got skewed by that last game. Corpisalo was terrible in the 7 shots that he faced, giving up 3 goals. Shesterkin did well, though. He had a well over a 920 save percentage. Disappointing end, but a good run here in Columbus. Year number three, we go to the conference finals. Oh, man. So what we can do here, at least, is keep track of the AHL team. As we, Let's see against what happens against uh, head coach replaced player against the Islanders farm team. 5-2 win. So we're going to be going to the conference. Sorry, the Calder Cup finals up against the San Diego Gulls. So you know what? I'm going to update the scouting, and then we'll come back and look at the AHL playoffs. Then we'll go through the beginning of the offseason, looking at the draft order, and then we'll figure out, you know, looking at the retirements as well, and then we'll figure out who's resigning, what's our offseason plan, and get ready for next episode. All right, scouting is all taken care of now. We're going to head into the draft with a pretty good idea of most prospects, thankfully. Uh, Shazirkin ended up getting injured in that last game, so that's why Corpus Salo came into play when he did. We're taking on the San Diego Gulls here in the finals. We are we had a record of 53-18-5. They went 42-21-5 here in the best of seven. Calder Cup final. We win game one, four to one. We win game two, two to nothing. Uh, I'm gonna keep whatever. Head coach can do what he has to do. Game now, Dragon Shinsev injured rib. Head coach, do what you gotta do. Game three, we win it three to two. So looking to sweep the San Diego Gulls. 17 points in 13 games for Felipe Sanderson. First period, 3-2 Cleveland. Sveshnikov, Clendenning, and Seneshin. Second period, 4-4. Four four. McKinnis scores in the power play, but Laredo and Grant come back. Shots are 25-15 heading into the third period. Tie game for Cleveland to win the Calder Cup in a sweeping fashion. Power play for the goals is killed off. Emil Bemstrom puts the lead up 5-4 to four now. One goal lead for the Monsters. Could that be enough with the shots being 32-19 at the moment? With just three minutes to go, I think it will be. Uh, actually, never mind. Empty net. The goals just score to tie it up at five. So that's cool. I'll just keep watching until the game gets finished here. Carl Soderberg with David back as there they are. Game's tied at five. Looks like he's going to head to overtime now. So I may be sitting here for a long score. San Diego extends it. They only had to sit here for like six minutes. All right, off to game five. Game five now. Calder Cup playoffs, Calder Cup finals. Let's do it. First period 1 1. Seneshin, second period 2 1. Laredo. Shots are 27 18. Don't tell me we're going to get reverse swept right here. Do not tell me we're going to get reverse swept by the San Diego Gulls in the Calder Cup finals. Let's go. Down by two. Power play Cleveland. Halfway through the period. You are kidding me. Game six now. Here we go. Cleveland and San Diego. Once again, first period 2 1. There we go. Ernie scores twice. Second period 5 2 San Diego. Nice. Nice. So just the slow sim. We should have never entered the slow sim, I suppose. And we lose 5 to 3. Nice. All right. Off to 7. I'm not even going to slow sim it this, this time. I'll just calendar sim it, I suppose. Let's just go straight through it and hope that we win. Because it looks like the calendar, going to the slow sim, has only hurt us. Uh, continue. And game seven, we win! Let's go. Cleveland Monsters win the Calder Cup. I wanted to watch the celebration. We barely win it 3-2. to two, But it looks like the slow sim was the curse. And the Boston Bruins end up winning the Stanley Cup as we lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. That a little less shame in getting swept out of the conference finals. They went on to beat the Jets in six games. So the Jets, who had beaten the Avs in six, Hawks in six, and Canucks in five, lose in six to the Bruins. So the Bruins were just that good. Jeremy Swayman was just that good, I suppose. Let's check out the awards of the season now that we know that the Bruins are Stanley Cup champions. The President's Trophy going to Vegas, and it was Winnipeg getting the Clarence S. Campbell Bowl. Bruins with their 
second appearance in five years, if you include the real world. Individual awards, Tyler Sagan wins the Art Ross for the second time in three years. Hart goes to William Nylander. Wow, second Leaf in three years, as Marner won it back in 2021. How about that for a Hart Trophy win? James Norris goes to Zach Wierenski, of course. Lady Bing to Tyler Sagan. Calder goes to Peyton Krebs. Con Smythe, yes, to Jeremy Swayman. Vezina goes to Mackenzie Blackwood. So Talbot, then Blackwood now. So, uh, Jennings goes to Swayman and Ranta. Masters into Mikey Anderson. Jack Adams to Pablo Prost. How about that? The second time in three years. That's the first time in NHL 21 that I have ever won multiple Jack Adams in a franchise mode and with the same coach as well. That is wild. So congrats to Pablo Prust. He was almost on the way out and maybe could be if there's still a better coach out there. But two Jack Adams in three years. Wow. Ryan O'Reilly wins the Ryan O'Reilly Award for the third time in a row and the fourth time in five years. Lindsay goes to William Nylander and Morris Richard to Tyler Sagan. In the AHL, Corey Perry, there he is. Win some awards down here, maybe. Korshkov wins the uh, Conn Smythe equivalent, and that's it. And then for team awards, Cleveland, we win the Calder Cup. Um, uh, is that it? As well as winner of the North Division and Eastern Conference. Cool. So not much hardware, but still got it nonetheless. Quickly looking at the playoff stats for Cleveland. I think it was Felipe Sanderson and Korshkov who were the leaders there. Korshkov with 10 goals and 19 points. Jacob Perrault with 16 in 19. Enstrom 15. Ernie 14. Schlappick. So Sanderson not there anymore because now he's been called up due to his overall. And uh, goaltending, Olivier Rodrigue, 15-3-1 with four shutouts. 907 save percentage, 2.28 goals against average. Mattis Kivlenix, a Calder Cup champion. Feels good to say. So let's go back to the NHL. We'll sim to the draft, see what the draft order is like. Uh, salary cap up to 94 point, whatever. We'll check the retirements. See who we're going to extend and call it a year. LA goes from 2 to 1. Islanders from 7 to 2. Arizona drops from 1 to 3. Ottawa 3 to 4, etc. Uh, central scouting rankings. We'll check those. Retired players now. Retiring in 2023. Patrick Marlowe at the age of 43 on Vegas. 1,265 points in 1,914 games. Phil Kessel ends with just over 1,000 points. How about that? Stastny, Brown, Chris Letang at an 86 retires. That's a bit... Uh, surprising at the age of 36 Wayne Simmons at the age of 34 even also retires former Columbus Blue Jacket Lucic Bozak a few yeah a few former uh, Blue Jackets here and Bozak and Frolik as well uh, Vlasic goes out looking at the goaltenders who retired uh, leading the class is Mike Smith at the age of 41 still a 79 overall Craig Anderson at the age of 42 still a 78 Halak, Brian Elliott, McElhaney, Hammond, Jeff Glass, legend of the game. Patrick O'Marlo, now a coach as well, so we could consider hiring him if he has the right fit. Oh, I didn't even look at our retirements because there was no one at the top, but Cal Clutterbuck retired. Oh, my apologies, Cal. I didn't look at your all-time stats. So we'll need a new grinder on that line, I suppose, now. Columbus and Cleveland. So Carson Flaherty on Cleveland retired. No other coaches retired. Uh, so Cal Clutterback, man, I wish I could have looked at his career numbers. I'm sorry. I always check my team, but usually in year three, plus we were a pretty young team. I didn't think there was anyone to even look at, but just to quickly check the contracts here, make sure that uh, Delorier and Shaw are still on the team. If I look at in the system, uh, Shaw still here and Delorier is still, yeah, they're younger, early thirties. So Cal Clutterbuck went out as an Eastern conference finalist. At least that was a bit better than what he would have done in free agency, rotting down there with the Islanders who didn't go as far. So at least we can give him that. But Cal Clutterbuck, thank you for your service. Moving into the draft now, I'll end it off quickly with just a couple quick questions. Just do note that we pick 28th in round number one, round number two in the mid to late 50s. So we have a first, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and two sevenths. A pretty normal draft. Do we want to consider moving up? If we were going to consider moving up, who would we trade for? Connor Bedard, first overall medium franchise. Do we trade the rights of Nick Felino and or Timo Meyer? Felino for sure, but we wouldn't really get much out of those guys. Some medium elite prospects here. Noah Astles looks amazing. Similar to Timu Salani, A-plus shooting, six-foot sniper with 
46 goals and 104 points in 66 games. Zibanejad, 2-2. Lume, Lume, however you want to pronounce it. Lasse Lume, A-plus shooting for a, a sniper centerman. Bit rare to find those. Rogers, Suter, good offensive defenseman, a lot of top six prospects. At 28, where we would be drafting, it would be uh, nothing really special. Top six D-men, so really nothing I'd want there. I'd definitely trade up or trade down, but not draft there. Top six forwards are available in the early 20s. Power forward here, Yuha Allen, three years away, similar to Eric St Stall. He's probably a wonky prospect with A minus shooting, but C minus skating. He's probably one of those wonky ones. Uh, do we want to think about trading up? Let me know if there's anyone you want to know more about. If you want screenshots or uh, to know more details about anybody, either on YouTube or here on Discord, let me know and I'll get that for you. Sorting by potential. Any gems? Have the scouts found some gems? Three bars. Medium elite. Neil DeFazio from Switzerland. All right. An Italian playing up in Switzerland, basically, with that name. Some two bar medium elites. Any low elites here? Yeah, some late low elites. So better scouting as the years go on, of course. Year number three, the scouting starting to get quite nice. So there are a couple of gems that we'll draft with our later picks. But if we do trade up, we need to have value to trade up with, and who would that value come from? We do have $8.3 million of extension dollars, and we need to think about would we re-sign Meyer, Felino, Sveshnikov, Wood, Dahan, Ernie, Gavrikov, Schlapik, Kukan, Stenlin, Korshkov, and then we move really into the AHL guys. Deloria, it'd be nice to bring him back. Probably let him walk and then sign him in free agency. He probably wants, uh, I don't know, we could just sign him straight up, 900k. Dargachinsev. Uh, Durapos unsigned, we can get him signed up. Goaltenders, uh, Olivier Rodrigue, probably let Berdain walk and then sign Tarasov to be the AHL backup. Unsigned, like we said, Durapos, our first round pick in year number one, who we took 26th overall. He scored uh, 97 points in 67 games. He'll be in the AHL next season for sure. Anyone else that we should be looking at signing? Thinking of just in terms of the entire team, so main roster... Looking at the forwards, looking by overall, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's, if, that's including Sveshenkov and Felino and Meyer. Take out those three, and now we take Ernie, Schlapik, and Shaw. So Shaw's definitely in there, but Schlapik, Stenlin, Benz, we'd, probably, we'd have to get someone, either re-sign someone or get someone, because I don't think the team could just be as is like that. Uh, main roster, just note as well, uh, Zach Hyman, up to an 85 overall. So he'll be on the last year of his deal into next season. Good fit for the third line. So that's top six, though. Who's our top six? Line A, Bjorkstrand, Reinhardt, but who's on our second line? Do we keep Olafson? Foodie's at an 84 now. Do we go Olafson, Foodie, Texier? Playmaker, Playmaker, Sniper? That means third line becomes Hyman, Jenner, and Sanderson. Is that what we're doing? Or do we maybe try that but get a better coach because the, the chemistry like that wasn't great? Do we get another coach? Defense is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 at the moment. I don't know about keeping Wood and Dahan. Kyle Wood wants to be signed to just shy of $3 million, And Calvin Dahan wants over $3 million, So I'm more inclined to let them walk. In the system, we do have Gavrikov. Of course, yeah, he's going to be wanting... 2.2 a bit more reasonable kukan wants okay we can sign him peak i would love to try and give peak a chance in the nhl he's been buried in the ahl as a 79 overall now low top 4d potential put up good plus minuses i would like to get him in the nhl next season maybe that means someone in the nhl has to walk so lots of questions for all of you to consider unfortunately we don't know who the free agents would be i'm not sure if we'd go out and splash money on a big one Looking at, uh, yeah, just upcoming free agents. This is who's listed here. Of course, not many or all of these, not all of these guys are going to make it to free agency. But here are the current uh, sorting by overall free agents that would be around. If you want to pause, take a look at any of those guys. And if you're curious, goaltenders look like that. So that is just about it, my friends. It was a good playoff run. We got swept out of the conference finals by the Boston Bruins. It was the furthest that this team has ever made. We're yet to win in a conference finals, a game in a conference finals, but we did make it all the way to game four, round three, the furthest in this franchise's history. Good performance from a lot of players. Let's get some growth. 
let's make the proper moves and let's run it back keep ourselves in the contention race and really go deep once again in year number four. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the run, leave a like. Also consider subscribing as well. Moving into NHL 22, we are just about a month away from NHL 22 action. Going to be posting updates on franchise mode and other things as they come out. So make sure that you're subscribed to be made aware of all of those. Links for everything else in the description, such as the Twitch page where we're doing MLB The Show 21 franchise mode and the Discord server where we talk a a lot more about hockey as well as more franchise mode if you have any questions or discussions on those topics we are there to talk and give any advice that you need so once again thank you so much for watching looking forward to reading all your suggestions here in the comments and the discord server and i will see you all in the next one